health is a fundamental right for everybody, independent of their social status. So then we have to ask ourselves, how well did we manage or how well are we organizing this, this right for health at the, at the global scale? Here in, in, in our environment, we, we suddenly were confronted with a similar challenge which most of the low and middle income countries face for a long, long time, the double burden of infectious and uh, non-infectious diseases. So this was, for me, surprising yeah, how this fundamental right that we discussed over the last decades permanently around the topic of non-communicable diseases, chronic diseases, suddenly affected us also in a, in a similar way like, like low and middle income countries. But do you think it increased the trust that we have as a society in those institutions or is it seen, is it too much of a dependence now? Or? I would say the expectation, and expectation has to do something with trust. Uh, I, I, uh, I, expect, I expect from a hospital that they run properly, that they have a 24-hour duty, and that finally worked. Yeah. Um, in, in the acute crisis situation, I, I, uh, we observed that, that, that the trust was, was increasing. So, and and the, the, the more this whole situation developed, the more we realized that the, the, the epidemiological situation in, in Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Austria was not that different, the more we realized that this national crisis management won't help us in, in the long term. So uh, at a certain point, we realized that, uh, that there was a need to be involved. People wanted to be engaged in, in, a, in a kind of a risk management approach. And uh, we're starting to complain about all these guidelines and rules, which one month earlier were highly appreciated. Uh, this, this whole crisis is... Uh, uh, helping us to see things much more clearly. Uh, we, we are currently working on, on a risk management project for the winter season with regards to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know, now know much more about the virus and we know that we have to keep a distance and that loud singing in, in, in closed settings is not very clever to do. But now um, turning this into a solution for winter tourism and involving every single hotel and, 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 and restaurant owner is, is quite a challenge. And, 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 and therefore I see here um, a, learning, a learning experience for the society as a whole under this magnifying lens. So we, we, we will have a different tourism. We will have to think about palliative care in, 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 mm -hmm. in a different way. We will have to protect our elderly people's homes in, in a different way. And we don't have a lot of time. So our learning curves have to be extremely steep. I think it's important that what we learn is sustainable. I think it shouldn't be a short-term uh, learning uh, experience where we just manage to get through the crisis and then the other ones are there. But the vaccination is actually um, a good point. I wonder if we should think uh, from the time where we have it, but I think we should sh think now uh, how we are going to act with the vaccination. Because um, I think that um, whatever medical or technological improvement we have, um, it can be used in the wrong way, economical reasons, whatever, uh, national concurrences, international markets, blah. Um, I think this is very, very difficult. But before we are not sure that we have this moral integri uh, integrity to handle this vaccination in a good way, like, for example, uh, to offer it to all countries or to make like a legal setting uh, so it's like, um, yeah, um, distributed in a, in a fair way. Um, I think this will be maybe another crisis that it's coming and not the climate crisis, but maybe the vaccination crisis. I don't know. But I think we should really start thinking now about how we're going to handle vaccination if it's on the market. Hopefully soon. This morning I met a civil engineer here and, and, and he told me when you build a house, you have to build the foundations, the fundament, that fit uh, perfectly to the, to the subject topic of Alpach this year. And he said, you will see that for six months. But after six months, the house is built one story after another and you will never see again the fundamentals. Mm. Uh, the foundations are invisible except if there is a crack. Uh, then if something is sh becomes shaky or you have a crack in the wall, then everyone starts thinking about the foundations. Um, I found that a very good uh, image. Uh, and here we are now. We have cracks. Yes. But there is a, 
uh, a very good line from Leonard Cohen in his song Anthem. His, Leonard Cohen sings, there is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. This mortality topic is really something that we should approach. Yes. And uh, I mean it now really in a, in a philosophical, anthropological, uh, anthropological way, because we were talking about um, they die too early. Mm -hmm. But uh, I really wonder if this discussion about dying too early is the thing we should approach, because it's also how we live in, in the yeah. time we have. And I really mean now uh, we are very privileged uh, in our countries here in Europe, here how we live. Uh, and uh, this is not the way in other countries. I'm, apart from climate change and health conditions and so on. So the structures, democratic structures, whatever, uh, aren't there. So um, we're talking about prolonging life uh, and I'm not completely sure um, why. So I have the feeling that we have this kind of topic that living as long as possible is the good life we have now. And uh, that might be now, um, yeah, a little bit um, courageous, but I would say uh, I think we should also see how we live. We should somehow try to get into a reflection mode. I mean, that is what we do now. Um, I, I like the formula, event plus reflection is experience. And if you just hop from one event to another, that's like if you drink only espresso. Yeah? That, that's not, <laughs> that, that, that can't be your standard drink. Yeah? Uh, you need the time of reflection to step back. And, and there I would like to bring in a religious point, uh, the seventh day, the, the Shabbat, which developed uh, afterwards in, in the, in, into Sunday and for the Muslims into Friday. Um, that is a... a a cultural, a cultural approach, uh, and it's the biggest interruption which we have in society. In, in the Jewish tradition, they say uh, more than the Jews have kept Shabbat, Shabbat has kept the Jews. And I think we should uh, see when do we have these times of reflection. If we just work 24-7 and have no interruption, no time also collectively, uh, not just individually, but collectively, and, and that means for our area here probably Sunday, uh, not to work, not to have shops open, uh, and to, to calm down and to have a collective moment possible for families, for, for groups meeting, for culture. Uh, I think what we have to look for is for good judgment, to train people for good judgment, uh, how to uh, how to meet in a safe environment and the other one is safe and, and mm -hmm. I'm safe. So be it the family, be in a cultural context, be it in a conference and uh, yeah, that, uh, to get to a, a personal good judgment which is more and more collective. Yeah? Um, we, we are currently preparing a risk management project for the winter tourism and engage all the, 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 the responsible people in the communities, in the hotels, in the cable car companies in order to build trust to make sure that the health authorities in the neighbor countries, in the markets of our tourists, will finally trust us. And, and everybody understands that there is no competition at the moment. Yeah? It's not the neighbor village, it's not the neighbor destination, it's not the neighbor country. The only enemy at the moment, so to say, the only competitor at the moment is the virus. And the, 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 the challenge to, to, to organize winter in a, in, a, in, a, in a different way. And I hope that we can maintain this, this habit of developing a joint goal, um, ignoring the competition between the medical association and the social security funds when it comes to the reforms and the reorganization of healthcare. Um, that's what I'm desiring or wishing and, 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 and aiming for. And, and therefore, I hope that the, the, the impact that the crisis had on our habits and, and attitude and, and reactions now will, will last for a while in the, in the most positive sense. I think what I would wish for is that we also um, engage not only as private persons but also institutional, as like in educational institutions, like on really um, strengthening the thought of that we are all global citizens and that all the, pro uh, the problems we are having and uh, going to have uh, are playing on a global level and can be solved only internationally and not nationally. So um, how to really get this into a, a normal curriculum, I, I really do not know at this moment, but I think to really um, be prepared better 
for the next pandemic, for the climate crisis, this actually is there already. Um, but still, I think it's very important to strengthen the thought um, on all levels, um, from small institutions like NGOs and street workers to high up institutions like universities and so on. So I really think there must be also this political will to strengthen this and not make uh, some um, populistic propaganda out of we can solve it just in our national way. So I think this would be my wish that we really strengthen that. I would say we are now very much in a mode of action. So we have our action model um, and we need that to, to survive and, uh, and to, uh, to look after our institutions. But what I would like to see is that at the same time we have a close look at our perception models. How do we perceive reality? And um, maybe that this crisis somehow gets us our frame a little bit wider in terms of inter more international, not just national, not, na not too narrow. Um, so uh, to have a close look on our perception models. Robert Musil, um, the man ohne Eigenschaften, the man without qualities, he has this um, distinction between um, sense of, of reality and we all have that sense of reality now, and the sense of potentiality. Wirklichkeitssinn uh, und Möglichkeitssinn. And I think we should get a little bit bigger sense of potentiality uh, to see, uh, to have a frame which is bigger, not just national, but international, which is inclusive, uh, not just the, the rich and the most important and the intellectuals, but Average people, disadvantaged. Um, I think if we could approach, if we could go down that road, that would be helpful for all. <laughs>